This is Eli Sanders for Time Magazine. Stephanie Meyer is a New York Times best-selling author of a series of vampire books that have earned her fans all over the world. Her latest, Breaking Dawn, was eagerly awaited by young readers, and a lot of older readers too. They've become wrapped up in her PG-rated tales of romancing a man with fangs. She sat down with us in Seattle to answer questions from Time readers. The first question comes from Teresa Kohlberg in Phoenix, Arizona. She says uh, that she's read that you came up with the story for Twilight in a dream you had one night. And she wonders if you come up with your characters in the same way. No, I, I think you only get one dream like that a lifetime. <laughs> I've never had a dream the same way and uh, it was all I needed really. Once I sort of unlocked the door, there were a lot of stories waiting to get out and I've never had a problem coming up with characters. Um, apparently there's enough people in my head to supply me for a while. Stephanie, I'm going into my senior year of college and just had the most in-depth conversation with a 14-year-old I've ever had about your books. How do you manage to write in a way that attracts readers of all ages? Well, I didn't write these books specifically for the YA audience. Um, I wrote them for me. I, I don't really know why they span the ages so well, but I find it really comforting that a lot of 30-somethings like myself with kids respond to them too. So I know that it's not just that I'm a 15-year-old on the inside, <laughs> that you know, there's, a, there's an audience that's the same age as me and, and grandma's reading it too. It's really nice to think that there's a wider appeal than just what exactly I wrote it for. So as you're writing, do you have a reader in mind? Me, always. I just never think about anything else when I'm writing. It's always about the story. And if I stop to think about what someone else would think about this section or how the people are going to respond to this one, I wouldn't be able to get a word on the page. What advice do you have for other women like yourself raising families at home who want to branch out and achieve something like you have done? Well, go for it. You know, I, I didn't plan to start a new career when I did this. Um, and it actually took a lot of courage to send out those query letters because, you know, that's just welcoming and rejection. And I'm not always up for that. But this has turned out marvelously well. Uh, it's let me be a mom and have my priority be my kids and at the same time explore this whole creative thing that brings me a lot of joy. And so if it's something you enjoy doing, you know, put the, the determination and will behind it and see what happens. How many query letters did you have to send out before you got your first I bite? sent 15 query letters. I got nine rejections, five no responses, and one person who wanted to see it. I think what uh, Jocelyn was also getting at is how, how you juggle the responsibilities of, of raising your children while also creating these fantastic, huge, sprawling books. It's a delicate balance that I never quite get right. Uh, the problem is, is everything keeps changing. Like I could figure it out if everything had stayed at a twilight level and my kids never aged. <laughs> but they keep changing and, and the books keep changing and the audience keeps changing. So I have to just keep readjusting. And I think that, um, I mean, my kids are my main priority and everything else sort of has to work around that. But I found ways to make it work, often at a great loss of sleep, but it happens. Throughout the Twilight Saga, there are so many different kinds of love between the characters. Romantic love, paternal love, platonic love, love of one's own community. Do you have some sort of message about love that you're trying to get your readers to walk away with? Well, I never write messages. <laughs> I always write things that uh, entertain me. And one of the things I find just really enjoyable to explore is the idea of love. And I like looking at the world from that perspective. What do you think about writing uh, so much tension and so much love with so little sex? Well, you know, you write what you know, and my uh, adolescence was very much that way. And, and I do think that if you skip right ahead to sex in a story, you're missing out on a lot of really exciting things that, I mean, the first time you hold somebody's hand, your heart just goes crazy. It's this amazing experience that you go home and tell your friends about, oh my gosh, he touched my hand, you know. And if you skip over that, you're missing things. Why go so fast? Slow it down and experience everything. Since you don't read vampire novels or watch movies, what kinds of research on vampires do you do? Um, or did you do any before writing Twilight? Not before. Um, in the middle of. Uh, the only time I really did any research on vampires was when Bella did research on vampires, I wanted to know what she would find if she went Googling on the subject. Um, because I was creating my own world and I knew I was breaking all the rules, I, I didn't feel like I wanted to find out just how many I was breaking. <laughs> Part of the fun of writing is getting to create a world. And if you're writing fantasy, why should you be limited by someone else's world? I, I didn't even want to go there. I just wanted to write what was entertaining and exciting for me. 
Has it been hard then to deal with the sort of celebrity status that comes with having books that sell this well and provoke this much passion and enthusiasm from their readers? It is hard, you know, and I don't have to deal with it every day, which is nice, because when I go home, I'm mom. That's my name and that's my role. And, you know, I get, luckily I get to write and have this amazing outlet for, you know, all those emotions and feelings. But, um, you know, I like being normal. I like that a lot. So it's only when I'm on tour and, and uh, people know I'm going to be there that people even recognize me. And, and that's nice to have that separation. Does it uh, spook you when people show up in costumes of your characters? No, I love the costumes. The costumes are awesome. I love the creativity, too. I keep thinking, okay, that's the best t-shirt I'm ever going to see. And then someone comes up with something else I didn't see coming in. It's just amazing. So, no, I really like that part. Have you given any thought to writing an alternate ending uh, to the most recent work, as some of your readers have demanded? Oh, no. No. Um, are they demanding that? <laughs> there, there are some people online who are uh, organizing a sort of complaint campaign, and they, they demand a new ending to the recent um, book. You know, that's for those fans, I would say, you know, I love your enthusiasm, but this is the ending that I wanted to write. And if there's a fantastic story in your head, go and write it down, because that's the thing. A lot of these kids are so creative. And there may be a story in that for them that they can, you know, make into their own world and their own characters. Go for it. You know, I, I, I really do appreciate how much they care. Um, and I think that they're really fabulously talented people. And, and maybe if maybe that need that they feel for some different ending is because they have a story in them.